Hello, everybody. Benedict here with part two of my uh, beginner's guide to the any percent speedrun okay. for Bioshock on PC. So in this guide, we are going to be going over the plane crash and welcome to Rapture levels. They're both kind of like intro levels. All right, so let's go. So we should have our save here, the crash site. Should have that all set up from, from the last video. And we can load right to the beginning of the game. And you can just hold forward if you want. I'm not going to be moving immediately. But if you have your uh, split set up right, the run should start immediately when this level loads. So yeah, just hold in forward so you can start moving. Um, but yeah, so here we are. Plane crash. Like I say, move forward. We're going to go this way. We are going to just go around the corner here. Don't worry about the fire. It doesn't actually hurt you. Just try to line up that little blinking light there with the center of your screen. That's, that's where you're headed. This level is really easy. This is a very, very short intro level. Um, and it's basically just one trick. It's a movement to pay attention to and, and one trick. So it's really simple and easy. And it's an easy trick itself, so that makes it nice. Alright, run up here. Along the left side of this railing here. And we're going to enter this door. Now as soon as we enter this room here, this door, it's going to shut behind us and it's going to get really dark. Um, that's fine. Just keep moving. You just got to kind of know where you're going. We're going to scale the left side of that little railing inside there. So we're going to go around to the left side of it. And it's just a circular railing. So we're going to kind of curve around to the right. And the back there, you can see where that little... You can see it on the video here, but there's like a little line in the background. So there's going to be a small amount of light reflecting off of a painting on the back hallway there. And that's where we're going to try to center our screen on and aim for it because that's the staircase leading down. So here we go. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Like I say we'll come around to the left side of this and I'm like slowly turn to the right and I can see the light reflection centered on the back of my screen. That's, that's the painting I'm talking about. So you center that and as soon as it lights up you should be able to pretty much come around here, turn to the right, fall down this way, and scale on down here. Now this is our one our one trick of this level. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to run in here and you see that little menu there that lets you pull the bat sphere. What we want to do is jump backwards, so we're going to be moving backwards and jump and then hit E as we're mid-air so we end up landing outside of this thing. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so now this is kind of like the intro cutscene for the game. And it's it's like three, three and a half minutes long, so that's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying to have it right in the beginning of your run. But that's fine. So what we're doing here, the reason that we do this is at the end of our little ride underwater here, we're going to sort of enter a chamber into the next building. And then the bathy sphere we're riding on here kind of elevates uh, and then the next level loads. But the way this works is that when your character model or whatever reaches a certain height the next level will start loading. So since we're on top of this thing um, we're able to just transition over to the next level a little bit faster. So I'll just let this cutscene play out and then we'll pick up after that. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. The city, the artist would not be incensed, where the scientists would not be bound by any ability, where the great would not be constrained by the small. The sweat, your brow, rapture, can become your city as well. There we go. That is the plane crash level. Pretty simple. Just a little bit of movement, one trick, and then a big cutscene. So we just get to watch the rest of this little cutscene here. And then we can start running.
Okay, so Atlas is going to start talking to us in a second from that little radio there. And we're just going to want to grab it as soon as it lets us. There we go. Got it. So a little bit more dialogue here, and then we're just going to start running forward through this highland. Right of the door here, so we're gonna be able to move out the first or the fastest. I'm just gonna run around the corner here and trigger this next sequence. Now, there's gonna be like an invisible barrier on this couch here, like on top of it, right? Can't jump over it. But you just keep it's just little timer things, so you're just waiting for it to finish. Come here, crouch, right? And we're gonna kind of back up into this little this little corner, um, and wait for this thing to be available. So I can pick it up right now, as you can see. But at first, while that dialogue is playing, you can't pick it up. Um, so you're just gonna to want to sit here and kind of wait for it to to be ready for you. Uh, so what we're gonna do is after we pick it up, like I said, we're crouching because there's gonna be like a little barrier here that you have to crouch under. We're gonna grab it, turn around real quick, swing at this, you know, junk here to to bust it up and crawl underneath. And as soon as we do that. If you can see that guy, that burning couch, and that splicer at the top of the stairs. As soon as we bust this thing open, he's going to kick that couch down at us. We're going to try to jump over like the top left portion of that couch. Uh, the reason that we do this is that there's like a little bit of RNG manipulation. Um, and if you jump right over the right part of the couch, um, that splicer will run towards you to start attacking. So you can just kill him a little bit faster. Otherwise, you got to chase after him. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and get in place here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So grab it, turn around, crawl through, stand up, and we're gonna jump. And he came at me. Yeah, so that was really nice. So he met me right at the door, so I can kill him nice and quick. And then we want to turn around and start heading up that way. Otherwise, you have to walk up here to to start attacking him. So it saves a little bit of time. Not the end of the world if you don't make it. Um, but anyways. Kill him, loot him quick enough if you can, otherwise just start moving this way immediately. Come up here, up the stairs. Now this is the first, like, I would say, like, big time save of the run. Uh, so, in part one of the video, the setup, I told you about a bunch of keybinds, and this is where a lot of the keybinds take effect, actually. So, um, one set of keybinds in particular that I was talking about. under the miscellaneous tab here are the, let's see, where was it, the quick save, the uh, use, and the pause game. And we want to press them in that order. Quick save, use, pause game. Um, and you want to use it while this electrobolt is targeted. What that's going to allow us to do is to quick save the game and grab this electrobolt while it's quick saving. And then we can, by pausing the game, we can immediately go out to the main menu. So I'll do that right there. The reason I put them F1, F2, F3 is because I can just roll it nice and easy. It uh, reduces the chance of me fat fingering something. Um, but as you can see, we pressed all those buttons and it brings us to this menu. What we're going to do is we're going to save, make a new save, and then in this menu you just want to press escape. So that when the menu is done saving it just brings you right to this, this menu again. And you're going to press load. So. It gets a little complicated, so I'm going to explain what's going on here. As soon as we load this save, we're going to want to start jumping backwards. And the other keybind that I had mentioned earlier was setting your jump button to one of your mouse scroll options, either scroll up or scroll down. We are going to want to keep hopping with that mouse scroll throughout the rest of this level. And the reason why is because this gatherer's garden that we interacted with, where we got the electro bolt from, um, is going to be trying to suck us into a, a cutscene here. but since we're doing this weird saving manipulation nonsense here, we're able to actually jump away from the cutscene. Um, but we just have to keep jumping away from it throughout the rest of the level. And I'll kind of show you what I mean as far as as far as the sliding. So you're going to hold backwards and jump. But you can see it keeps sliding me towards this gatherer's garden. It wants to make me interact with it because then it's going to trigger a cutscene. Um, yeah, so like I say, the reason we're doing this is because it allows us to, get sk to uh, skip cutscenes, which is super useful. Um, but yeah, it just kind of leaves us with this weird, annoying 
mechanic that we have to deal with. Okay, so what we want to do now is get through this door down here. Um, and if you like go to switch your weapons, you can pull out your electro bolt now. And we're gonna and it's kind of this the hitbox for this lock here is kind of annoying, so hopefully I can get it first try. But you sort of want to hit like almost like the top center, like the top half of it, the center of the top half or something, right where that spark is coming from. Well, there we go. Got it first try. It's just kind of annoying with this jumping mechanic. Um, but yeah, so that's what you want to do, and then jump under here, and then this area is going to flood if I can't really, like, move forward. Oh, there we go. It kind of frees you in place for a second. What we're going to want to do is jump up through here, and jump through the fuselage here, and out to the right, and then down this hall. Alright, and once we get through this door, this door's gonna lock, and I'm gonna kind of explain what we're gonna do here. Um, there we go, it's locked now. Okay, so you have to trigger a couple of enemies in this room. And if you move down either to that side of the room or to that side of the room, an enemy will spawn in this center area of, of this room. It'll run from where I'm standing to that door. Um, but what you have to do is jump down to one of those sides and then turn around. Just because of the sliding mechanic, it's much easier to jump down that side and not that side. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Jump this way. And we'll turn around. And there you go. You see that guy kind of streak by. Um, now, he's going to kind of still stay out of screen until we reach that center area again. And then he'll spawn in either this section or that section. Um, but we can control it, you know, depending on where we're standing and stuff. So we want to come around, like I said, after you trigger him, you come around this way and you just look backwards. And you want to come into the hallway again, and then you can move forward after a second. Okay, so once you kill that guy, um, you move this way. Once you kind of stare at the door, it'll open. And another guy for you to take care of. As soon as you enter this stairwell, this next scene is going to trigger. Um, this guy's going to come run out and attack you. Um, probably just hop past him if you can and hop into this elevator. But I'm going to sort of explain um, what this elevator is all about. It's it's nothing crazy. It's just kind of a small hitbox for your uh, character to travel through just because of the weird hopping mechanic and sliding mechanic that's going on. Probably just make like a save here if you want um, to do some practice. Just because, like I say, it's kind of tricky. So it's probably going to want to be like right around here or something where you're going to want to make your, your last jump into the elevator to help you like slide right into it. There you go. That was nice and clean. Otherwise, if you don't get in there with a nice smooth jump, you just got to kind of keep like mashing the jump button. There you go. And you can usually end up forcing your way in. But if you can get the timing of it and jump in there nice and smooth, that's obviously the way to do it. Now we're going to want to jump out of this elevator a little bit earlier. A little bit early. And uh, jump to the right when we reach the top. And you can, like I say, you can jump out of it a little early, so you can see like the top of it will be coming down. You don't have to wait till the elevator stops. You just have to wait till our character can fit through. Probably, usually, right when you hear that um, goal notification. So you want to come here in one fluid motion and kill her and grab that gun like that. Um, now this jump is just kind of annoying, just because of the obstacles in the way and again the weird mechanic. So what we're gonna want to do is kind of jump into this corner. Then you want to aim your cursor in the corner of the door frame right here after you jump forward right so like this and jump through right it's kind of a a weird thing that might take some practice so you might just have to try it a few times so you get used to it but otherwise after you do that we can jump through here and start making our way through this area this is nothing too crazy my only advice would just be watch out for stuff on the floor like sometimes if she dies just wrong she might like drop her lead pipe here which can be an obstacle or like that party hat I've stepped on too many times. If you like land on any objects like that, it'll slide you all over the place. Um, it's really annoying. Um, like I'll see if I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. See, like I stepped on it, and now I like I'm having trouble jumping forward. It like really messes up your movement. Yeah, so just try to avoid 
just move out of the way if you need to, or just make sure you're actually jumping over it. Uh, but what you want to do anyways is come around this way, into this bathroom to the left-hand side here. You kind of want to get caught between this little corner where the toilet seat is. Uh, the reason we want to be here is because it's going to help us position ourselves to uh, jump through this door frame here. This door frame has um, kind of like a weird geometry to it, just that mixed with the way we're sliding through this level here. Uh, it makes it kind of tough to jump through, but as long as you position yourself uh, by the toilet in the corner here, uh, you should be able to jump through just fine. So what we're going to want to do is jump through and then jump immediately afterwards, and then you're going to want to go to your menu and make a save, uh, and then you can load that save. And then you can keep hopping after that. Otherwise, the reason we're doing that is so we can just skip this cutscene that's playing out right now. Uh, we want to pull out our uh, wrench, and then we can jump over this way, over this railing, and we can immediately smash that lock. Normally, we'd have to wait for this whole cutscene to finish to break that lock, but we can just break it right away just because of the save manipulation that we were doing. So next we're just going to jump down the hallway and um, kill or pass a handful of enemies. Okay, so we're just going to move down this way to the right here and and uh, kill her maybe if she gets in your way. You don't necessarily need to, but then you're going to come around this way, come this way and make sure you have some Electro Bolt ready because we are going to zap these people in the water. And then the plan after that is to hop over this railing. The movement for this railing is kind of annoying. Because you got to be standing, I mean, you can't be like flush up against it, so you got to be away from the railing a little bit to jump over it. Uh, but then we're going to slide this way, and we're going to um, trigger a little uh, alarm that's down to the to the right here. And then we're going to jump across this pool and shoot somebody that spawns down this hallway down here. Um, it's, I don't know, it's not like too difficult, but you just got to be careful because if you miss her, then you potentially will lose a lot of time. There we go. Come over here, get close to that gate, and it'll trigger this alarm, and then we're going to immediately want to start hopping this way, and shoot her, and then you're going to want to jump into this little crevice here and wait for these two people to come down here. Shoot them on the stairs if you can, it saves a little time, but otherwise you can just electro bolt them when they get into the water there. If you can kill them before they get into the water, it just saves a tiny bit of time. Alright, miss, 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 nice. Okay. So after you take care of them, you're just going to want to come this way, jump into this little crook here and hold forward, and we're just waiting for this gate to open. We'll keep jumping on through. This little obstacle can be kind of annoying to jump over, but you know, it's not like the worst. We get the timing of it right, it's not so bad. Okay. A cutscene triggers as soon as we cross like an in invisible line right there basically, and it'll lock these doors and it'll start a whole, whatever, a whole cutscene that we have to watch. However. What we can do is just zap the exit of the door with Electro Bolt here, and it'll just move us to the next level without having to watch the cutscene. If you want to jump in, probably do around, you know, right over there or something, then you should be able to see the exit door, and you can zap it. Just make sure you don't hop over that, that line over there. So, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We just come on through here. It'll kind of slide you this way if you just go against the back there, and you just zap the door. Bloop. All right. That is it for part two for the plane crash and welcome to Rapture level. And as soon as this levels, that uh, annoying jumping mechanic stops. Thank goodness. Uh, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. We will be back next time with part three, which will be the medical pavilion stage. Take care, everybody. Catch y'all later.